Welcome to the Deep Dive. We're the show that takes a whole heap of information, finds the really crucial bits, and, well, gives them straight to you. Today, we're jumping into network security, specifically uh, looking at the kind of challenges and insights you get when you really study Palo Alto networks. Maybe you need to get up to speed fast, or maybe you're just you know, curious about how modern networks are actually kept safe. Mm. Our goal here is to give you that shortcut, the core features, the strategy, the why behind it all. Okay, let's unpack this. Yeah, our mission, if you like, is to pull out those key nuggets, not just what things are, but the problems they solve and uh, what that means for network defense overall. Right, and just for context, a lot of these insights, they're related to material for the NETSEC Pro exam. Quick facts on that. Online, proctored. Uh, 75 to 85 questions, multiple choice, multiple select. 90 minutes. 90 minutes, yeah. All in English, and you need a 70% to pass. But that's just the background. It's exactly. Let's get into the actual tech, how modern firewalls are really changing the game. And this is where it gets really interesting, I think. We're moving way beyond just, you know, blocking ports like in the old days. We're talking features that give you much better visibility and control. You can see who is doing what. And a really key example of this is user ID. That's a Palo Alto Networks feature, right? Yeah. Maps IPs to usernames. That's it. Exactly. User ID fundamentally changes things. Instead of just seeing an IP address, which could be anyone, you know who it belongs to. So your security policies can be based on identity. Like the marketing group gets access to this, finance gets that. Regardless of the actual device they're using at the time. Precisely. And it works by integrating with things like Active Directory, pulling that user information. It's uh, really powerful for identity-based rules. So it's really about securing the person, not just the machine. Yeah. That feels like a big shift. It is a very big shift. And building on that, another feature we looked at was App ID. This one sounds pretty impressive, identifying apps no matter the port or protocol. How does that actually work? It feels like it has to look deeper. It does. App ID doesn't just trust the port number because, well, apps can easily disguise themselves or use non-standard ports. Instead, it inspects the actual packet content, the data itself, and the application's behavior. Ah, okay, so it's pattern recognition almost. Sort of, yeah, sophisticated analysis. This means you get really accurate application control. The key thing here is App ID moves security from being reactive and port-based to being proactive and application aware. You're securing what people are actually doing, you know? Yeah. Which is vital for stopping sneaky threats or uh, shadow IT. Knowing the actual application, that's powerful. Okay, so if you know who is doing what, the next step is applying policies effectively, especially in a complex network. That's where zones come in, right? In Palo Alto firewalls. Yeah. How do they help with managing all this? Zones are fundamental, yeah. They're about simplifying policy management and, um, creating logical segments. Think of them like named containers for your firewall interfaces. Okay. So instead of writing rules for every single IP range, you group interfaces, maybe a server zone, a user zone, a DMZ. Right, group interfaces that should have similar rules. Exactly. It makes managing security on complex networks way more intuitive, fewer mistakes, more consistency. And when you put user ID, app ID, and zones together, What's fascinating is you see this uh, this foundational shift. You're moving beyond just IPs and ports. You're understanding the user, the application, and the logical network segment. That context is key. It gives you a much richer context for making really precise security decisions. Yeah, I can see that, uh -huh. especially when you scale up. Managing security across like lots of sites or really complex setups, that sounds like it could get messy fast without the right tools. Which brings us to Panorama. What's its main role? Panorama is Palo Alto Network's answer to that complexity. It's their centralized management platform, its main job. Simplify those large-scale deployments. It gives you a single place to manage configurations, push out policies. And collect logs. And collect logs, exactly, right. from multiple firewalls. It's all about a unified console, reducing the operational burden, ensuring consistency everywhere. Makes sense. Keep things manageable and consistent. But then there's also Strata Cloud Manager. How does that differ? Is it just panorama in the cloud or it's a bit more than that actually strata cloud manager takes log aggregation and analytics uh, a step further panorama is great for managing your on-prem firewalls strata cloud manager aggregates logs and analytics from multiple firewalls and your cloud environments ah so it bridges on-prem and cloud visibility precisely it gives you that unified view across today's hybrid world your data center your cloud stuff it's really about that broader cloud integrated visibility and evolution really Okay, broader view. Now, talking about security features, what actually goes into a security profile? 
on one of these next gen firewalls, these NGFWs. What does that mean for someone wanting, you know, a really solid security posture? Right. The security profiles where you layer on the actual threat prevention beyond just allowing or denying traffic. Typically, you'll find things like antivirus, anti spyware, vulnerability protection, other threat prevention tools. Well, core defenses. The core defenses, yeah. These profiles get applied to your traffic, working alongside App ID, to spot and block known threats, malware, exploits, that kind of thing. It's about actively defending, not just controlling access. Okay, but threats change constantly, right? Yeah. New attacks pop up all the time. So those foundational defenses might not be enough on their own. That's where these cloud delivered security services, the CDSS, come in. Exactly. The threat landscape moves fast, so you need defenses that adapt just as quickly. CDSS provides that dynamic cloud-powered intelligence. Now let's talk about a couple of those. Cortex XDR and Wildfire, they're focused on threat detection. They are, but in slightly different ways. Cortex XDR is, well, it stands for Extended Detection and Response. It pulls data from endpoints, networks, the cloud, basically your whole digital environment to give you a really broad view for detecting and responding to threats quickly. Okay, so XDR is about the bigger picture, connecting dots across different areas. What about Wildfire? Wildfire is more focused. It's about advanced malware analysis, specifically in the cloud. Its real power is identifying zero-day threats. Those are the brand new, never-before-seen attacks. How does it do that? It takes suspicious, unknown files and basically detonates them, runs them in a safe, secure cloud environment, a sandbox, to see what they do. This raises that crucial question, right? How do you stop threats that technically don't exist yet in any database? Wildfire is a key part of that answer. That cloud sandbox approach is clever. Yeah. Okay, another CDSS is Data Loss Prevention, DLP. What's its job? DLP is all about protecting your sensitive data, preventing it from leaving the organization when it shouldn't. Think of it like a security guard for outbound data. It checks traffic to make sure confidential stuff intellectual property, customer records, financials, isn't leaking out accidentally or, you know, maliciously. Protecting the crown jewels, essentially. Pretty much, yeah. All right. And one more area, remote work. It's huge now, basically permanent for many. How do you extend that corporate security out to someone's home office or wherever they are? Palo Alto's solution for that is Global Protect. Yes, Global Protect is their answer for secure remote access. And it's pretty comprehensive. It basically extends your full set of firewall security policies out to those remote users, no matter where they connect from. Through VPN. Through robust VPN, yes, but also endpoint protection. It ensures those remote devices are protected, stay compliant, and are treated like a secure part of the corporate network. So it brings the remote workers securely inside the perimeter, virtually speaking. That's a good way to put it, yeah. Okay, so we've covered a lot of the what, what these features do, the problems they solve, which are massive problems. Now let's shift a bit to the how, the practical side, the best practices for actually using these things securely. Specifically, SSL forward proxy decryption. That's decrypting user traffic to inspect it, right? Mm -hmm. What are the best practices there? Because that sounds sensitive. It absolutely is sensitive, and this part is really crucial. It's about using powerful features responsibly, balancing security with privacy and trust. For SSL forward proxy decryption, there are two really key best practices. First, exclude sensitive traffic. Like what? Things like banking sites, healthcare portals, anything highly personal or subject to strict privacy rules. You generally configure the firewall to not decrypt that traffic, respect user privacy, meet compliance needs. Okay, that makes sense. Don't decrypt everything. What's the second one? Second, always use certificates signed by a trusted certificate authority, a CA. This is vital. If you use a self-sign or untrusted certificate for the decryption process, users' browsers will throw up big, scary security warnings. Yeah, nobody likes those. Kills user trust immediately. Exactly. It breaks trust and causes operational headaches. So use a cert from a trusted CA that client devices already recognize. These two practices, excluding sensitive traffic and using trusted certs, they're non-negotiable, really, for security and for keeping users happy and trusting. Good advice. So that leaves us with a final thought for you, the listener, to maybe chew on a bit. Mm -hmm. Given how fast cloud services are evolving and how permanent remote work seems to be, how might our very ideas of user identity and application visibility keep expanding beyond just the traditional network edge? And thinking about that, what completely new security challenges could that expansion bring? Something to think about. We really hope this deep dive gave you some valuable insights, things you can use in your own learning or your job. Keep digging. Keep asking questions.